The Space Museum is the seventh serial of the second season in the British science fiction television series Doctor Who, which was first broadcast in four weekly parts from 24 April to 15 May 1965. Set in a space museum on the planet Zeros, the serial has the time traveler the first Doctor William Hartnell and his traveling companions Ian Chesterton William Russell, Barbara Wright Jacqueline Hill, and Vicky Maureen O'Brien looking for a way to change their fate after seeing themselves turned into museum exhibits in the future. Topic. Plot The TARDIS arrives near a vast space museum on the planet Zeros, but has jumped a time track. The Doctor, Ian Chesterton, Barbara Wright and Vicky have a series of bizarre experiences as they venture outside and into the museum, not least that they see but cannot be seen by the militaristic Morocks who run the museum, or the servile indigenous Zerons who work for them. The museum contains fascinating exhibits, including a Dalek shell, but the most worrying is the four travelers themselves encased and on display. Quite soon afterward the time track slips back and, though the exhibits of the TARDIS and the four travelers vanish, they still find themselves inside the museum. The head of the Morocks, Lobos, is a bored and desperate museum administrator and colony governor, who reflects sourly that the glories of the Moric Empire are past. Like Rome, the empire became decadent and then declined. The Morocks have found the TARDIS and now start tracking down the occupants who have, as usual, become separated. The Doctor is the first to be found, but evades their interrogation tactics. Meanwhile, Vicky has made contact with the Zerons and, hearing of their enslavement, aids them in their plans to stage a revolution. They attack the Moric Armory and Vicky outwits its controlling computer. With their new weapons, the Zerons are able to begin a revolution, which slowly takes hold. Ian has meanwhile freed the Doctor from Lobos, who had begun the process of freezing him and turning him into an exhibit. Ian and the Doctor are quickly recaptured by the Moric guards, and Barbara and Vicky are captured shortly thereafter. With all four held prisoner in the museum, it looks like the time track prediction of their future as museum exhibits will soon be realized after all. Help comes from the Zeron revolutionaries, who kill Lobos and the other Moric captors. The Zerons then go about destroying the hated museum as the TARDIS crew slips away. They take with them a time space visualizer as a souvenir. On the planet Skaro, their departure is noted by the Daleks. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Production. Episode one begins with a brief reprise of the Crusade episode four, which is currently the only surviving film footage of that episode. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cast notes. William Hartnell was on holiday during the recording of Episode 3. Thus, he is only seen in the reprise of Episode 2. This story features an appearance by Jeremy Bullock, who later played Hal in The Time Warrior 1973-74. Ivor Salter later played Odysseus in The Myth Makers 1965 and Sergeant Markham in Black Orchid 1982. Peter Craze is the younger brother of Michael Craze, who played companion Ben Jackson from 1966 to 1967. Peter later played Dupont in The War Games 1969 and Costa in Nightmare of Eden 1979. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Broadcast and Reception. In 2009, Mark Braxton of Radio Times noted that the Space Museum kicks off so well but did not take the opportunity to discuss ideas such as predestination and also boasted a predictable, poorly acted, conflict and many implausibilities. However, he felt that the serial showcased Vicky's vibrant character and the Dalek joke was one of the few elements that make this rather tedious traits memorable. Reviewing the DVD release, SFX's Nick Setchfield described the Space Museum as offering a killingly dull environment in which to stage an unengaging take on Who's Eternal Rebels vs. Despots formula. Despite the lovely fourth-dimensional weirdness of the first episode and the refreshing Morocks who were reminiscent of Douglas Adams' work. Jonathan Wilkins of Dreamwatch also called the first episode great and the rest 
dull, bog standard who, which were not terrible but not terribly exciting either, as it plods rather than races towards a deeply unsatisfactory climax. Graham Kibble White, writing for Doctor Who magazine, said that the first episode falsely set the audience up for three more weeks of high concept plotting, when in fact the Doctor dismissed the time travel problems and the rest was dreary, except for some of Hartnell's charm. DVD Talks John Sinnott was more positive towards the story, writing, There were a lot of great plot points that served to keep viewers guessing, and some subtle comedy that really added a lot to the whole show. He also complimented the light touches of humor. In 2010, io9's Charlie Jane Anders listed the cliffhanger of the first episode as among the best in the program. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Commercial releases. Topic: <laughs> 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 In print. A novelization of this serial, written by Glyn Jones, was published by Target Books in January 1987. <laughs> Home media This story was released alongside the surviving episodes of The Crusade on VHS in 1999. The audio soundtrack was released with narration from Maureen O'Brien on CD in May 2009. It was released on DVD in a box set with The Chase on 1 March 2010.